it's a very human story. It seems very simple, but it's very intricate. There's been a lot of passion and a lot of effort put into making this movie come together. I can't think of any place I'd rather be shooting or doing anything from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. the next morning. I mean, I'm getting here on time to work 12-hour, 13-hour days and sleeping vampire hours. Yes, I'm happy. There's a smorgasbord of stuff that happens. There's a wonderful cast, very open. Well, there weren't any egos and there weren't any clashes. There were just a bunch of people determined to make this movie work. And I think we did. As producers, we've had a lot of miracles come about that help pull this thing together. Because there were iffy days and there were a lot of changes even right down to the wire. We were kept on our toes as writers because the actors truly became <laughs> these people. Let's roll sound one and action. Company! Barbara, that's me and my character. I'm having our annual birthday for my, my best friend Jean. And there's all kinds of stuff that is going on, and we're just trying to carry on as if everything is normal. You have all these seemingly beautiful people who gather for this annual dinner feast. As the dinner progresses, the warts begin to show. It's kind of interesting, and it's kind of fun to kind of break it down and tackle it moment to moment and then try and bring it to life. Sometimes when you make a movie at a lower budget and a faster pace, the people involved bond on a deeper level because you all have to work together to get it done. The whole story and the way that it's all intertwined together was really so well done and, and really remarkable. We had a nice little story and a lot, they gave us a lot of freedom to, to play. I love the story and how each character has a, a really strong arc. I like ensemble films like The Big Chill, and this is, you know, in my view, in that tradition. It's a script that has very strong female characters, which is something I think nowadays is, is sometimes very difficult to come around to come across. They're strong women, they're independent women. I think all the males in the film are such model citizens that, uh, you know, how <laughs> could I resist? Uh, kicking ass. I think we kick some serious ass. It was a strong woman's role. It beckoned me, and I and I answered. <laughs> My character recently had a, a mastectomy and is very much in denial about it. And this is the first time that she's socialized since uh, she's gone through her ordeal. And she's not facing things very well. Even though she is in front of the man that she's afraid of losing, even though she's in front of the people that are her friends, she actually faces her fears and I think does something that is tremendously brave in facing herself. Just in the course of this one night, she has quite a journey in some ways because she's kind of taking the blinders off her eyes. You just have to accept that there are things about the other person you're never going to understand and you shouldn't even try. What are you saying to her? Just passing on some hard-earned wisdom. I spent some time with a breast cancer support group and I listened to stories and I also have a friend who had uh, gone through a mastectomy, double mastectomy. It really brought everything to the surface in some ways for me to listen to people's stories and just to be in that atmosphere. I felt very privileged and honored. I read as much as I could. I wanted to understand what technically I had gone through. And then I had to kind of distance myself from those people because they had more perspective than my character has. My character is still pretty much in the dark. Let me help you. I don't need any help. What is wrong with all you people? I'm fine. There's layer upon layer of issues 
and we even hit this right on the head in the film, it's not just a physical recovery, it's an emotional recovery. His wife's had a mastectomy and is coming to terms with the depth of trauma that, that that's caused in her life and in their lives. They just can't communicate and I think they have been paralyzed by fear. They've been thrown something that um, they never anticipated and don't have the knowledge to deal with it. You take my words and you twist them around. Barbara, you brought yourself here. I am not the one running, Jack. You are so far down the road, I can't even see you anymore. You're not there for me. You're not in this marriage. Things are not always as they appear, you know, when you look at this house and you assume that everything in, inside of a house like this is either taking place on an elevated or um, privileged level of existence for the people who own it and live in it. But in reality, you know, their life's a lot more difficult than it appears. This is pity, Jack. That's what you give me, pity and disgust. Oh, is it too much for you to handle? I'm sorry, Jack, but it's not about you. It's not about you. You didn't lose anything, Jack. You didn't lose anything. It's not about you. You look at me. Please, Jack, just look at me. It was very disturbing to wear this prosthetic um, thing. We had the actress come in and we did a live cast of her in the shop before we started filming. And they made the sculpture on her cast and ran it in foam. This is what it looks like beforehand when we first get it. And this is the one that I've pre-painted already. I was surprised. I actually have some photographs and you know, I've shown them to people and they're shocked. It's about a bunch of people that are in crisis one way or the other in their lives and the story is about that kind of coming to a head and then coming to a resolution. That's always very appealing to actors. I play the character of Jean, who's a really interesting lady. She comes from the kind of past that doesn't lend itself to uh, a lot of faith in relationships. I was drawn to this film because it had some actors in it that I greatly admire, Barbara Williams and Michael Keaton. Hey, sorry, I'm late. Oh, baby, there you are. <laughs> Happy birthday. And it allowed me to play a character that's both funny and serious. You have got to let the people who love you help you. Tell me how. Tell me what you need. I don't know how. Jean is the warmth, Jean is the humor, Jean is the one that can see out of the corner of her eye exactly what's happening to everyone in every part of the room. What I like about Leo is his ability to allow things to just roll off his back. He, he's having fun. Leo enjoys life. He's uh, a contractor by trade who practices astrology. Explain that cigar you have in the movie. I mean, you carry it around with you a lot. It's a bad habit, and every time I take it out and I have it in my hand, I'm reminded of the bad habits in my life. Gene was a bad habit. whole time we were together, you were never available. Never. You only wanted me when nobody was looking. <laughs> That's not true. Cut! Cut, cut, cut! Let's go one more time. We're gonna have this table tour. Okay, we've already covered it. Okay, I'm ready. 78 Baker, take one marker. And action! My character is basically married and sort of living in this bubble of a life. Everything on the outside seems perfect and everything on the outside seems to be going fine, but it's sort of not. Chris is a very successful uh, lawyer and uh, very shrewd, but also very controlling and manipulative. I don't know, what are they talking about? Oh, Leo's doing everybody's charts, so I gave him your birth information. <laughs> what the hell for? Why is that handyman? No, he's a contractor for Jack and he does this too. I thought it would be fun. Did you give my social security number to him? Two people live a certain way for so long, and when confronted with a difficulty, all the facades sort of break away, and you know they're forced to deal with each other. You are so controlling, you are so manipulative, and yes, I have allowed you to be. But this has to stop. We have to stop. I want something real. There's nothing real here. Kara, Kara. Alright, here we go, guys. Lock it up. Quietly. I think 
think Olivia is very um, representative of a lot of girls in their mid-twenties that are trying to find their way and trying to find love and trying to find out who they are. If I ever do commit years down the road, and it's highly unlikely, but if I ever do, it begins with both my partner and I going through intensive, introspective psychotherapy. But I think that there are some things that she's still trying to find out, especially in regards to relationships. So, who's the other hot redhead? Oh, that is Jimmy. That's Olivia's flavor of the month. Tasty? Mm, yeah, right, tasty. Well, Jimmy, my character Jimmy, is uh, a little unusual in the script. He's the only guy who's really got some fairly naked ulterior motives. Hi. Oh, hi, Barbara. <laughs> and he's a bit of an operator. It's just a birthday kiss. You kissed her? There's a smorgasbord of, of things that come up. Delectable stuff that happens in that scene. And action! Okay, oh, no, stop there. Stop there, please. This is the distance you should keep with them, okay? Okay, okay zoom in. I think of Ramon as kind of a Greek chorus. He's the only gay person at the uh, party. He is not the only single person, but he's probably the one who's been single the most. And I think he has a very objective view of man-woman relationships not being embroiled in them himself. I think when you're doing an ensemble film like this, it is really important that the cast bond as much as they can because of the closeness of the characters. And it's something that, you know, you can approximate on screen, but if there's some real juice there, it's always better. Uh, we had a rehearsal period about a week before we actually started shooting where we sat around the table, we talked, we read the script, made suggestions, we got to know each other. By the time we hit our first day, we already had context with each other. There were already things we'd all found about each other that we loved. I think that definitely helps. Chris, come help me with the cake. Right now my favorite scene is a scene between my character, Ramon, and uh, Stan Cahill's character, Chris. And, and you want to know what really bothers me? Yeah. Hold this. A man's position in this world has steadily lost its rightful rank. Take a look at a dying breed. I'm, I'm the last of the real men. Thanks, Muffin. Wash this out. Doing that scene with Stan was a great experience. The writers and producers gave us you know, a certain amount of leeway to play with it, and we discovered new things in it, and it was... Uh, Definitely a wonderful experience. Pick it up, here we go. Action, 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 cut. I think people will find a lot they can relate to. It's funny and um, it's kind of tragic too. The story is a sincere and complicated unraveling of people's lives. Unlike a lot of films out there, it's one that's driven purely by character and relationship. And I personally think those are the most satisfying films. So the entire movie as a whole, I think, has a lot to say and is done in a very entertaining way. It's chock full of a lot of terrific actors playing characters who are each in their own way struggling toward what we're all struggling for, which is some kind of peace and some kind of happiness.